Hello, Mario. In this video, Mario calculates a bearing swing. You complete the following cadastral traverse shown below. Your traverse work is in terms of geodetic control, but the boundary bearings and distances shown from DP319 are in terms of an old cadastral datum, a plane datum not in terms of geodetic datum which revolves on a curved earth and some projections you find and survey fix the corner boundary posts marked with a filled black square shown on DP319 use missing line calculations to determine bearings and distances between the old posts through both your new Travis work and through DP319 boundary dimensions. Analyse these results to come up with a ray trace adjustment to the bearings on DP319 to bring them into terms of geodetic datum. Compute any scale distance correction to bring DP319 boundary dimensions into terms of your survey work. So this is uh, quite a common occurrence uh, here in New Zealand where some of our early surveys was done on in terms of plane surveying and then subsequently we did a geodetic used a geodetic datum and this resulted in some differences in the bearings either sometimes just because of the nature of the old work and where their origin occurred or because of various projection corrections that may have been applied in the geodetic thing geodetic datum so uh, these are common occurrences and from time to time we have to determine the bearing swing and apply that to the old work to bring it into terms with the new work. Occasionally there are situations where the old distances require some sort of scale correction to them perhaps because the measuring equipment they were using was not calibrated correctly, their band had stretched or various other reasons perhaps related to the projections being used. So what we do in these situations is we basically uh, calculate the known bearings um, independently. So in this case here we have the bearings and distances from DP319 say between A and post B and then using our own work which we back 100% we can using a missing line calculate from post A through IT2, IT3, IS4 to post B we can calculate that same vector using a missing line calculation and then we are able to compare the two, one being the geodetic value that we get and the second one, or the plane one from DP319. Similarly we can calculate the missing line post B, IS4 to post C. We can calculate post B, post C through that small missing line close and we can close, calculate post C to post D by going post C to I spike 4 to iron spike 5 and to post D calculating the missing line and comparing it. Um, it's worthwhile knowing of course that we can convert the links to meters by multiplying by 0 0.201168. The links times 0.201168 will give us meters. When doing these missing lines it's important that you take the most efficient route between A and B, B and C, C and D. There are possibly other ways you could calculate these but it's sort of standard to follow the most efficient route. So just to uh, recap we are going to calculate missing lines from A, IT2, IT3, iron spoke 4 to post B which will calculate that line post B, iron spike 4 to post C, the second missing line will calculate that fence line there and post C, iron spike 4, iron spike 5, post D will calculate this missing line here. I will be have other videos showing you how to calculate missing lines although it should be possible, uh, fairly easily possible to determine it um, using my video on 
calculating missing lines from total coordinates. Essentially with the missing line calculation the the missing line is actually the the closing or the misclose. So if we go from A through to B and then calculate the misclose that's in fact the missing line. But I will do a separate video of that in due course. Now here I'm displaying the results of the missing lines. Uh, here with the calculated bearings and distances between um, post first one in, in the order post A to B here 96, 16, 20, 121 So these are our geodetic values and here we can see by looking up here that that's from post B to post C and this one here post C to post D. So they're the ones, the values that I've calculated using the missing line. Here are the bearings that we've got from a DP319 and here's the links converted to meters. So the thing to do now is to look at the what correction you would have to apply to the old cadastral data to bring it in terms of the geodetic. So here that we can see that if we add 6 minutes 20 to this uh, bearing from DP319 we will get the calculated bearing here, our newly calculated bearing. I've rounded all these to the nearest uh, 10 seconds um, because that's the sort of what we would apply. Um, in this case here we've had, we would have to add 6 minutes 10 and once again here 6 minutes 10 to this one. Um, <clears throat> so we average those out which gives us 6 minutes 13 as an average um, amount that we would apply. In fact the bearing correction that I would apply in this instance would be 6 minutes 10. A bearing swing of plus 6 minutes 10 to bring DP319 into terms with our current survey. Also looking at the scale, what we do here is w we have to work out what we would have to multiply the old cadastral distance by to get the new one. So in this case here we can see the old cadastral distance is larger and the geodetic smaller so we would divide the geodetic by the old cadastral which will give us a scale factor and we do that for each of the the three things here and we can see the various scale factors that we get which are all round about 0 0.995 being the average. I've calculated the average here 0 0.9948 so that's just a straight average, add the 3 up, divide by 3. Uh, here, the average, um, averaging here, just averaging the seconds. Alright, and just so that you know, if you want a copy of the notes um, to associate with this video, I've put my email here, morio at morio.com, for notes, and just a little reminder here, converting links to meters, multiplied by 0.2. 201168. So if you need a little more help with your missing lines, uh, look out for my video coming up on, on how to calculate missing lines. Uh, in the meantime, there you go, how to calculate a bearing swing. Um, and hope it all goes well for you. Cheers.